Hello, I'm Dr. Jim Coyle, and this is the first of several tutorials related to the social work course challenges in human behavior. This is going to be an overview of the course and a uh, initial discussion of the challenges of living model used in the course. All social work practice integrates a client situation, which we're going to talk about as life challenges in this course, context, the influencing factors um, that affect that situation, knowledge about the situation, which are the theories that, and perspectives that we use to explain how the situation occurs and how we can best address it, as well as intervention. And we're going to look at how that intervention fits with the client situation, the life challenges, the context, as well as our understanding about how the situation occurs. For all social workers, this is going to be kind of something that we integrate in order to work with the client effectively. I'm going to ask you to First, consider what you've already learned about human behavior, about context, about knowledge and theory, about social work intervention, because this is not a beginning for you. You've already learned a lot of things, and you've learned those from your personal experiences, from school learning, either in previous courses or this course, as well as your professional experiences and skills. So keep in mind that you are fitting in all this new knowledge with what you already have known. Um, and the MSW program courses help you to learn how to help clients. Uh, social policy and social justice helps you to recognize social factors influencing clients. Uh, research helps you to accept, ask, assess your practice methods. The practice methods courses help show you how to do the interventions to help the clients. This course, Challenges in Human Behavior, is a little different because it encourages a critical thinking process that helps you choose what to do with clients, even for issues in which you lack experience. So we're going to talk about a number of common life challenges that affect our clients, but rather than say, this is how you work with each one of them, we're going to say, how, what is the process that you will use as a social worker in figuring out what to do to best help clients. Social workers use critical thinking to connect the life challenges with their context, the theory, and the intervention. They assess client situations and they plan effective intervention. Critical thinking is useful, particularly in terms of how we understand what's going on, because theory helps us uh, improve our practice decisions because it tells us what's going on in a situation, because a previous experience with life challenges that are discussed in this course can help us hone our practice skills. Considering the theoretical perspective and how they teach us about these common influences gives us flexibility, because if we can change the theory or the perspectives that we're using, it'll suggest different ways of understanding what's happening with clients, as well as different things for helping the clients. Theories in general suggest effective practice methods, and we often learn those practice methods in the context of theoretical approaches. When you're critical thinking with clients, there's a number of questions that are helpful. What do I know about the client and the client situation? What context influenced the client situation, their life challenges? How's the client reacting or coping to the situation? How do I think about, how do I explain and organize what's happening with the client? In other words, what's the theoretical perspective I'm using? Uh, practice methods and interventions that are suggested by this theoretical perspective and how they fit with the client and with the client's situation. The final question is, is, what else do I need to know and what resources will help me? You won't, all, you won't ever know everything there is to know about how to help every client, but having a recognition about what are the resources that I have and how do I get the help that I need is an important thing for your critical thinking for working with clients. Critical thinking questions that are helpful for the course is what have you learned from the reading? 
What have you learned from the videos that I've asked you to watch? What have you learned from these tutorials that I will have you watch? How does this fit with your personal experiences in the past as well as your work experiences? Um, how's it fit with what you've already learned and how does it kind of add to that? What makes sense? What does not make sense? It's particularly important to focus on what does not make sense because those are the things you want to bring into the class discussion or your questions for me. How can you use this work with your clients? Using the examples, using the theory, using the, what we talk about in class, start to think about, okay, the clients that you work with in the, and, and your job, how would you work? How would you apply this to them? What else do you need to learn? Keep in mind, again, as you are progressing in your social work career, even after graduation, you're going to continue to learn about how to better help clients. Okay, for example, let's say in a work situation, you receive a note that you'll be doing an intake interview with Tanya, who's 20 years old with two children, and she's struggling financially to support her family. With this very little information, what are your initial thoughts about this client? Okay, I understand there's not enough information to answer any questions, but you're not answering questions. You're just looking at what are your initial reactions? What are the things that you think about when you think about this particular client? Jot down three or four thoughts. I'm asking you to jot things down because we're going to talk about Tanya in an in-class exercise in small groups. And I want you to be able to take what we are talking about in this, in this tutorial and to be ready to kind of explain what your thoughts are. And so jotting down thoughts is a way of making this happen, of ma making this connection. I remember there's no right or wrong reactions. And if you need more time, press pause on the video, write down a few things and then continue with the tutorial. Another thing that I want you to do is write down the, th the things that may be the basis for your initial thoughts. For example, they may be knowledge of physical, cognitive and emotional development or beliefs about teenage pregnancy or single parenthood, about factors influencing poverty, about the interplay between individuals, families, and community factors, about risk and protective factors. Another possibility is, is the experiences that come from your workplace, from the policies, from the workplace clientele, from the experiences that you've had with clients. All of these will kind of for, help you formulate, okay, what is the information I'm going to be looking for from this client? How am I thinking about this client? Yes, her presentation may change some of this, but at least it gives us a basis for starting to think about a client. Let me give you some, uh, an example of this by going over some of my initial thoughts about Tanya. My first uh, reaction is caring for two children at 20 years old sounds like a really big thing. And I wonder what resources she may have to help her. And this comes from my ten tendency to focus on resilience. I wonder what factors influence your financial situation, since that's what they're talking about. Is this because she has limited ability to manage finances and childcare and things like that? Um, is it has to do with challenges with uh, welfare agencies or difficulties she's having with employers or job or a landlord or uh, neighbors and schools and things like that? Maybe all these things are in interest, uh, things that are influencing her. And this kind of question comes from my, uh, from ecological perspective. Finally, I'm also interested in hearing her story because my personal and practice experiences have influenced my belief that everybody has a unique story. And I really want to find out what is, what the, about the situation makes it unique for Tanya and what's happening with her and how's it work for her. So you jot down your thoughts about this. We are going to use the framework, the challenges of living framework from uh, Hutchinson, which is the reading that was assigned to you, to kind of think about clients, and in this case, Tanya. Remember that the aspects are epidemiology, how this is developed and how it happens, the theories of etiology, what causes it, is this a 
biological issues, psychological, social, spiritual, or a combination? What are the risk and protective factors? What are the consequences of this specific challenge for people in general, as well as for Tanya? How do people cope? What are some of the things we've heard about coping in this situation when we read in the literature, as well as from our experience, as well as what does the client tell us that she's been able to do about the situation? What social justice issues may be involved? And what are the practice implications? When we look at all of this, what does it suggest we need to do in terms of interventions? Which may work? What are obstacles we, we may need to take a look at? What may, be, what may fit for the client and how do we uh, kind of assess that? Consider how you would apply the challenges of the living model and note down some thoughts about this. How would you use it with clients in general? But also keep in mind is, is what does the challenges of, the, of living model suggest for assessing Tanya's situation? Perhaps you want to know, you want to ask questions about how her situation developed. Not only how's it going on right now, but how did it develop and how did it occur? What were some of the influencing factors? What theories will make sense to you in terms of explaining the situation? What risk and protective factors do you see happening? How is she coping? What are the social justice in, uh, issues? What interventions may help? And what interventions may need to be worked around? So what we're going to do is, is we are going to have you use this model in a small group discussion of Tanya. So what I want you to do is to save your notes and then in class, I'm going to give you some information that kind of fills out some of the details that Tanya would be able to report to you. And you can begin to assess it and look at how do we look at this particular life challenge for this client related to this challenges model. At the end of each of these tutorials, I'm also going to ask you to consider what have you learned? What have you learned from the assigned readings? What have you learned from any videos that I have you look at? What have you learned from the tutorial itself? What questions do you have? What do you want to learn and what will help you learn? This is particularly important, important and how can you make this course work for you? What's gonna help you learn what you need in this course? How can you communicate your needs to the class and to the instructor? By talking about it, asking questions in class, by talking about it with small groups, by asking me questions as the instructor or talking to me during office hours. These are all ways that you can make this course work better for you. So I look forward to talking with you in the exercise during class.